Welcome. This time, we are taking a look at Dino Wars, Destruction of Spondylus. It was released in April 1990 on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm going to be playing it on my Analog NT Mini Noir. But before we get started, let's take a look at the box. The plot is conveniently included right on the back. Something was terribly wrong in the distant man-made Spondylus solar system. One by one, the planet's central life support computers had been infected with a life-threatening virus, while the planet's surfaces had been overrun by giant computerized dinosaurs known as Robosaurs. Under attack in his laboratory on Alpha Planet, Professor Proteus, the mastermind of the Spondylus system and founder of the Robosaur project, suddenly realized that his deadly sabotage could only be the work of his former partner, the deranged Dr. Brainius. Years earlier, the Doctor had fled Alpha Planet after Professor Proteus had exposed him for performing forbidden robotic experiments on human subjects. At last, he had returned to seek his revenge using the Professor's own creations. But little did he realize that Proteus had been hard at work for the past few years perfecting the ultimate Robosaur, Cybersaurus. The gameplay consists of two modes, Dinosaur and Man Mode. Here in Dinosaur Mode, you start off with a simple punch, but by defeating the other robot dinosaurs, you are able to pick up power-ups and different attacks. The power-ups consist of a P icon and a B icon. The P icon powers up your attack, and the B icon gives you a barrier or a shield. Here I'm using the Fist 1 weapon, which shoots your fist out in a square. And here is my least favorite, the bomb. It lobs a projectile forward, which can be tricky to hit enemies with. Here is the first dinosaur boss that you'll face. Upon defeating them, you receive a key that lets you go into this uh, doorway here. This doorway is actually a computer portal, as it says in the manual. And here is one of the two cutscenes that are shown in this game. Uh, there's one that shows you getting out of the dinosaur, and one that shows you getting in. And they're replayed over and over throughout the game. And this is the other playstyle. In man mode, you take control of Professor Proteus, and your objective is to destroy the virus-infected life support computer. This building that you're in is known as the Artificial Intelligence Compound. And these are the hardest sections in the game that you'll face. And it's not due to taking too many hits, it's the jumping, which is very deliberate, and takes a minute to get used to. But once you do, it's pretty manageable. Now this is the life support computer here, and if you didn't kill all the enemies and you destroy the life support computer, they will all be destroyed once this computer gets destroyed. This boss design reminds me of a few other Nintendo games, but mainly Bionic Commando. Now, once you destroy the life support computer, you have to exit out. Uh, and this part reminds me of Air Fortress, but again, there are a number of NES games that had this play mechanic. And here is the second cutscene of two. So the first planet is Alpha Planet, and you've saved the environment here, and it's off to the next one. As you saw there, this game has a password system that's pretty simple and easy to get back into the game. It's very handy because in this game there are no lives. You die once and it's back to the title screen. But you can continue from there or enter in a password. This is the Fireballs weapon and it is one of the best weapons in the game.
Each of the dinosaur or robosaur or whatever levels include two parts. There's usually an above ground section and then an underground or inside section. If you pick up multiple of the same weapon, it powers up your weapon. Here you see I have fireballs too. Most weapons can be powered up three times. Here's the second robot boss that you'll encounter. It's a robot pterodactyl. As you enter the computer portal, again, you see one of the two cutscenes. Are these really cutscenes? I mean, they're more like a still image. This is the second life support computer that you have to destroy. Now, each level has a different layout to this room, but the computer always looks the same. And there's usually a spot like right here where I can kneel down and the computer can't hit me, but I can hit him still. Skipping ahead, here's the third level robot boss. Why do these enemy robot dinosaurs have these keys? It seems very strange. Here is the stage 3 computer that you have to destroy. And as you see, the layout's different on the screen, but there's still this spot where I can kneel and not be hit. What kind of computer is this anyway? It seems to be like a living organ or something. Here you see stage 4. And there's some good variation in the graphics on the dinosaur levels. And that's a good thing because once you enter the artificial intelligence compound, those all look the same. So at least they added a bit of varied look with the dinosaur levels. And here you see I have Fireball 3, and it makes a nice Contra style spread. Here is Beam 2, which adds an upward firing fireball, I guess. It can be tricky to keep the weapon that you have currently. You kind of have to jump over the weapons that are dropped by the other enemy dinosaurs. And here is the dinosaur boss, the stage 4. It's another pterodactyl, but this one's gray. Here is the boss computer of stage 4, and on this one you can kind of just kneel behind this barricade here and not get hit. Here's the stage 5 robot boss, and it's another pterodactyl, but this one's green. This is the stage 5 life support computer, and on this one I kind of just stood right in front of him and took the hits and just got in the trading of fire here. I never once worried about running out of energy during this playthrough, as I didn't die from that one time. It's really something you can just kind of ignore. Now during the dinosaur stages, if you look to the top of the screen in the center there's that skill crane claw looking thing. 
That is actually your satellite defense system. It can be used one time per level by pushing select, and it basically destroys every enemy on the screen. I honestly would forget that I had it and barely used it. Here you see beam 3, which makes a nice spread. In my opinion, this is the best weapon, but here you see I accidentally picked up this fist, but if you do get a P icon, it'll level it up all the way. Fist 3 has a pretty good range. to the stage 6 robot boss. It looks like a Brachiosaurus. I thought these guys were supposed to be plant eaters. As you can see, this game does suffer from a good amount of sprite flicker. Here we are at the stage 6 computer, and again, there's not a lot of challenge here. Here's the final robot boss that you'll encounter and he's actually the toughest one. This is the last artificial intelligence compound that needs to be shut down. And most of these compounds that you go through are either three or four screens. This one's seven, so this is definitely the most difficult one. And that difficulty comes from the jumping. You really have to center your jump on these little platforms or you can fall right through them. I had to replay this section five or six times, and it was all because of this screen right here. This is the most difficult screen in the game, and it's because of the left-right moving platforms there are very hard to time. Oddly enough, I could do it every time on the way to the computer, but on the way out I kept missing the jump, and it became kind of frustrating, but I finally made it through. Let's talk about the presentation of this game. I feel like the graphics are just okay. There's nothing spectacular here. I mean, some of the dinosaurs look pretty cool, but also they're pretty small. But that was par for the course for a Nintendo Entertainment System game. The music's okay. By the time you go through the different parts of the game seven times, I mean, you've heard this song over and over again. There's this one song for the man mode, and two songs for the dinosaur mode, and also boss songs, but that's about it as far as music in this game. And here it is, the final boss. It's just another artificial intelligence computer. buy, rent, or leave it on the shelf. I went back and forth on this one, and initially I was going to call it a rent because it's pretty easy and you can play through it in under an hour. 
but I checked pricecharting.com to see what this game is going for right now, and it's around five dollars. And I feel like at five dollars, it's a good value. So this game is a buy. If you've never beaten a NES game, this is a good place to start. As difficulty, I would say is easy on this one. But let's see how this game was reviewed back in 1990. It was covered in the January-February 1990 issue of Nintendo Power, with Batman on the cover, and featuring Jack Nicholson as Joker. Batman may be on the cover, but there's a Dino Wars poster inside. I had this poster up on my bedroom wall. I mean, come on, it's a big robot dinosaur. Rid the solar system of huge mechanical lizards. Despite the included poster, this game didn't get very good scores from Nintendo Power. As you can see here, it got a 3.5 for graphics and sound, a 3 for play control, a 3 for challenge, and a 3.5 for theme and fun. I can respect that opinion. Let me know what you think of Dino Wars in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you catch the next review.